The good news is you can do this. And I'm going to encourage you, whatever you've been through, my prayers are with you. My thoughts are with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Rola, clinical psychologist. And today I'm continuing my self-disclosure series about my emotional recovery from divorce. This is episode 11. And the tool I'm going to be sharing with you today is prayers of grief. This is the tool for this episode and I'm going to delve into it. But before I do that, please subscribe, press that notification bell so that you have immediate access to my videos and you give me greater visibility on YouTube. Also, please follow me on social media at Ask Dr. Rolla, A-S-K-D-R-R-O-L-A. The tool for this episode is Prayers of Grief. Huh. I'm going to be reading scriptures here that empowered me and helped me to cope with the sadness and the grief from the loss of my marriage. And I know that many people who have read the Bible sometimes look at it from this aspect of the victories, the people who, who won victories. And we tend to sometimes look more at those who overcame rather than how they overcame. One of the most powerful things I learned from my divorce and through the years prior, when I had been reading the Bible regularly as a Christian, not as a pastor, not as a leader, as a Christian from the age of 16, is that there is a process. And it's easy to talk about other people when they're going through or judge them, but when one is starting to go through pain and trauma, then you feel alone. And sometimes the only person you feel can fully understand you, at least in some moments, because remember I connected with people, but in some moments, the only person that can really understand the depth of my grief is God and the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking God of the Bible. I'm gonna be reading a few scriptures that empowered me to manage my pain and to manage my grief. It also gave me permission to be sad. Sometimes we don't give ourselves a permission to be sad. I gave myself permission to grieve. Isaiah 53, 3, it says that Jesus was despised and rejected, and he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. Jesus himself is described here as a suffering savior. When we think about a savior, we think about a powerful person but it was a powerful person who went through grief. That gave me permission to pour out my sadness and grief in the place of prayer. I have heard some doctrine from different churches about how somebody who believes should not grieve. I have to tell you right now, that doctrine is erroneous and has really kept many people stuck so much that they are masking their pain with religion and some of those people may never heal. This scripture made me know that if Jesus, the savior of the world, was acquainted with grief, therefore he's not ashamed of my grief. I can approach the place of prayer with confidence that I will not be rejected. Another scripture is Hebrew 5, 7. It says, while Jesus were here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings in my time of prayer of grief, I offered prayers and pleadings. In some of it, I asked God to save my marriage. Sometimes I asked God to save me. And then sometimes, of course, I'm begging God, save me, save my children. What is the future going to look like for me? I can't bear this grief. Help me, God. Hebrews 5, 7 says, Jesus prayed to the one who was able to rescue him. There is a level of pain and death, that, uh, pain and grief that I was feeling. The depth of pain was so much. I felt like if I even shared it with a the therapist, they would only see me for an hour. And I'm a therapist. They'll say, we're done. 
but God has no time limit in me opening up myself to him. I could pray for the next few hours. God and the Holy Spirit is listening and Jesus has gone ahead to experience what I've experienced so I'm not alone. Very powerful scriptures that gave me permission to release grief in the place of prayer. Then this Isaiah 54, 6 is the most powerful of them all for me. Isaiah 54, 6. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit, a wife who married young only to be rejected. The new, another version says, you were a young wife abandoned by her husband. When I saw that imagery in the scripture, I was sad, but I also got excited because I then understood even more how the Lord understands my own kind of rejection. And I cried out to the Lord. There were some nights I didn't cry that much, but some nights all I can do, I could do in the place of prayer. Is, God. But as time went on, those times of prayer became times of uplifting. I might cry to the end of the prayer, but by the next morning, I just have a little bit of hope in me that I'm gonna be okay. I don't know how it happened, but I knew it was something supernatural. That prayer transformed me. It gave me this powerful outlet to release my pain, but also know that the God that I serve identifies with my pain. He's not ashamed of me and he's connecting with me. And when I use God in the he, that's how we use God in the he in the Bible. But we know that God is spiritual. He cannot be put down to a gender. God created the whole earth. So I held on to God, the Holy Spirit. I held on to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I held on to the God who created the heavens and the earth. Sometimes to pray, I had to force myself to pray. It, could, it would have been easier for me to just complain. In the early days, about every night, I will pray for about an hour. And if I feel too tired, one night I actually put my foot in water to keep me alive, keep me awake, not alive, because I was alive. Why? Because I needed that prayer time to release the pain, to release the sense of, of abandonment. And I knew it was going to be a, a process. So I didn't just pray one time. I prayed continuously. Now let me talk about some of the incredible psychological and spiritual effects of praying grief prayers. Because oftentimes we think we, can do, we just need to pray in faith. I can do this. No, sometimes it's okay to admit you can't do it. And as you see from the scriptures I've read, you can't do it. But that makes you move forward to somebody who can do it. And then when you align with the God who can do it, you receive strength that you never thought you could have. And that is probably one of the reasons why I'm able to share my emotional recovery journey with you today. Because I exhaled in the place of prayer. I connected in the place of prayer. And I reaped the incredible benefits, not just in the moment, but long term. And I continue to reap them today. One of the things that happened because I prayed the prayers of grief is that my acting out anger was reduced. I had a lot of anger over what happened in my marriage, but I was not acting it out in a way that would be inappropriate because I was talking about that anger in the place of prayer. Another thing I received in the place of prayer was a sense of confidence that I'm deeply loved. That feeling of abandonment, abandonment is not a good feeling. But in the place of prayer, I felt like God held me close and loved me. Another thing that prayer did for me is it helped me to search areas in which I need to rechannel my anger and rechannel my frustration. It was clear to me by the Holy Spirit that two wrongs don't make a right. Even if I don't like what is being done to me, how can I continue to be light? something about light darkness always disappears when there is light so i got that revelation you must be light 
And being light means you're walking in a wise, savvy way, but you're not feeding into the negativity that is coming from this situation. Another powerful psychological impact for me was anticipating the place of prayer every night gave me a sense of relief. So even though I, was, I could be going through a hard day, knowing that tonight I get to pray and release it made me feel better even before I got to the place of prayer. And that again helped me to delay the need to act out how I feel and to know that I have a God that hears me. I don't have to wait to the place of prayer to pray. I could pray during the day and I did that. But something about that time where it was just me and the Lord and it was often at night when the kids were asleep, I just laid out there. I laid out there and it felt amazing. The place of prayer of praying for grief in grief so that I could receive healing and a sense of direction helped me to take my ex-husband off the throne of my life. When you've been married to somebody for so long, like I was 15 years, known him since I was 14 years old, that person holds a lot of power in your life. The place of prayer diminished his role and uplifted who God was for me. Not to say that that person should not exist or do well, but if they're not there for you in that moment, constantly looking at them is not going to serve any positive purpose. At least for me, it wasn't. Some other people, to each their own. I saw the Lord as the final, almighty, objective rescuer. And I knew he would do me right in the end. He understood the whole story, the backstory, what is true or not. So I'm dealing with a just God. And that is a powerful place to be. So I didn't look to the lawyers anymore as my source. Just messengers and tools in God's hands. I did not look to the judge to vindicate me. I began to look to God to vindicate me. Because he's a just God. Very, very powerful. And then this point was life transforming for me. That God has the big picture. When I was formed in my mother's womb, when nobody knew who I was and I didn't have a name, I know God created me then. He was with me all these years before I got married. And when I was married, he blessed me. He blessed me with homes. He blessed me with children. There were very positive times in that relationship. And therefore, even after the marriage, God remains with me. Little by little, God began to paint for me a picture. And when God paints a picture, it's a big picture. It's not just based on where we are now. Because that, what, what I'm going through right now, keeps me feeling like there's no hope for me. Can keep me feeling like there's nowhere to go. But God paints a big picture that gives me a futuristic outlook. That helps me to see what is possible, even though I don't fully understand what that is. I became excited about working with God in the journey that he is setting forth for me. I don't need to fully understand it, but God created the whole world. Therefore, what is going on with my divorce is not the end of a story. And my horizon began to expand. Amazingly. And some of it unfolded. When I say expand, I didn't really know the details. It just expanded. Hope came up in me. Expectation came up in me. It minimized the pain and it helped me to handle the grief better. I want you to subscribe. I'm more than excited about this series because it's like a, a growth, growth and relearning experience for me myself. Looking back and analyzing a 14 year period and telling you what I went through and how these tools have helped me it's just amazing and I want you to share it, subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. I want to thank you very, very much for listening and encouraging me through this series. Talk to you soon. Bye now.